Mountains rise high above the land. They are grand structures. Many people feel small near them. Their peaks often wear caps of white snow. Some peaks are sharp, like giant stone needles. Others are more rounded, smoothed by long ages of time. Mountains seem to guard the ancient secrets of Earth. They have watched civilizations appear and then fade away. Their silent, imposing presence shapes the world we live in. These are truly Earth's great natural sculptures, inspiring wonder. But these giants are not born overnight, nor are they still. Their creation is a slow, incredibly powerful process deep within our planet. Immense forces are constantly at work. These unseen forces push and pull the Earth's crust. This causes the land to be lifted, sometimes folded, or even cracked apart. This building of mountains takes millions upon millions of years. It is a grand story, written in layers of rock. We can learn to read this geological story. It tells of Earth's restless, creative energy. Mountains can form in several different, fascinating ways. Some are constructed when Earth's huge continental plates collide. The land at the edges crumples up, like paper being pushed together. Great folds of rock then rise slowly towards the sky. Other mountains are born directly from fire and heat. Molten rock called magma erupts from deep below the surface. It cools and hardens, building up layers over time. Each mountain, therefore, has its own unique birth story. Geologists, scientists who study the Earth, investigate these stories very carefully. In this exploration, we will focus on two main types of mountains. First, we will look closely at block mountains. These impressive structures are formed by giant, shifting blocks of the Earth's crust. Then we will turn our attention to volcanic mountains. These are striking peaks built by the eruption of magma from below. Understanding how both types of mountains are formed is truly fascinating. It clearly shows us the dynamic and ever-changing nature of our world. Let us begin our journey into how these incredible mountains are meticulously made by Earth's forces. Imagine immense solid blocks that make up the Earth's crust. These blocks are not fixed. They can actually move. Block mountains are formed when these huge sections of crust are pushed upwards. Sometimes it is not just uplift. The land around a block can sink downwards. This process leaves a high, often flat-topped block standing tall. These mountains frequently have one very steep side, a sharp face. The other side, in contrast, can be much more gentle in its slope. This characteristic shape gives us clues about their dramatic creation. This significant movement of crustal blocks happens along large cracks in the earth. These extensive cracks are known to geologists as faults. Faults are essentially zones of weakness within the earth's rocky crust. You can think of them as breaks or fractures in a giant complex rock puzzle. When the earth's crust stretches or is pulled apart, these faults allow movement. This movement can sometimes be sudden and violent, causing powerful earthquakes. More often, it is a very slow, almost imperceptible creep occurring over vast stretches of geological time. When the crust pulls apart, it creates powerful tensional forces. Along what is called a normal fault, one block of land drops down relative to another. The block next to it might remain high, or it could even be pushed slightly upwards. The resulting high block is termed a horst by geologists. The block that drops down, forming a valley, is called a graben. A block mountain is, in essence, a large horst or a series of horsts. This process creates very distinct landscapes of alternating valleys and mountain ranges. The Sierra Nevada mountains in California serve as a famous classic example. They form a massive block mountain range stretching for hundreds of miles. The land to the east of the Sierra Nevada dropped down significantly. This dramatic faulting action left the Sierra Nevada towering high above the surrounding terrain. Another clear example can be found in the Vosges Mountains in France. The nearby Rhine River Valley is a well-known graben, a sunken block. These mountains vividly show the immense power of faulting processes. They stand as solid evidence of Earth's crust being pulled, stretched and lifted. In Africa, the Simeon Mountains in Ethiopia are a notable example of block mountains. The Drakensberg Mountains in South Africa also showcase the dramatic effects of faulting. Additionally, the Atlas Mountains in Morocco are another significant block mountain range. These African block mountains further illustrate the powerful geological forces at work. Now let us turn our gaze to mountains that are born of intense fire. These are the volcanic mountains, striking features on Earth's surface. They are primarily built by hot, molten material that erupts from deep within the planet. 
This molten rock is known as magma when it is still trapped underground. Once this magma reaches the Earth's surface and flows out, it is then called lava. Volcanic mountains often, though not always, have a distinctive cone shape. They can be very dramatic and awe-inspiring in their beauty. Deep beneath the Earth's solid surface, conditions can cause rock to melt. This newly formed melted rock or magma is typically less dense than the solid rock surrounding it. Because it is lighter, it begins a slow journey trying to rise upwards. It actively seeks out available paths towards the surface. These paths can be existing cracks or other weak spots within the Earth's crust. As this magma ascends, it might collect in large underground pools called magma chambers. Tremendous pressure can build up within these magma chambers over time. When the internal pressure within a magma chamber becomes too great to be contained, an eruption occurs, hot lava, fine ash and various gases explode or flow out from the volcano's vent. This ejected material then begins to pile up around the opening. Layer upon layer, eruption after eruption, the volcanic mountain grows steadily taller and wider. Some volcanic eruptions are incredibly explosive, violently throwing ash and rock fragments high into the atmosphere. Others involve much slower moving flows of lava that spread out across the landscape, building broad shields. Mount Fuji in Japan is a classic iconic volcanic mountain. It possesses a beautifully symmetrical cone shape admired worldwide. This famous peak was meticulously built by many eruptions over many thousands of years. Mount Rainier, located in Washington State in the USA, is another prominent example. It is a large stratovolcano, a common type of composite volcanic mountain. Mount Vesuvius in Italy, historically famous for burying the Roman city of Pompeii, is also a volcanic mountain. Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, the highest mountain in Africa, is a majestic volcanic peak. Mount Kenya, the second highest mountain in Africa, is another significant volcanic mountain. Mount Elgon, straddling the border between Kenya and Uganda, is an extinct shield volcano. These impressive peaks are enduring monuments to Earth's fiery internal breath. We have now seen two distinct ways that mountains are made. Block mountains rise when the Earth's crust cracks and then shifts significantly. Huge solid blocks of land are uplifted by these powerful movements. Volcanic mountains, in contrast, grow from repeated eruptions of molten material. Melted rock, ash and cinders build them up, layer by careful layer. These are certainly very different geological processes, yet both of these mechanisms create the towering, majestic features that we so often admire. Both clearly demonstrate Earth's incredible, relentless power to reshape its own surface. The entire process of building mountains takes an exceptionally long time. We are often talking about timescales involving millions or even tens of millions of years. This is a span of time that is very difficult for us as humans to truly imagine. Our individual lives are very short in comparison to these immense geological epochs. Geologists refer to this vast expanse of time as deep time. It is the fundamental timescale upon which Earth's long history unfolds. Understanding deep time is crucial for understanding mountains. It is important to remember that the very same forces that build mountains are still actively at work today. The Earth's tectonic plates, which make up its crust, are always moving, albeit very slowly. Magma is still being generated in the hot regions deep below our feet. New mountains are, in fact, being born in certain parts of the world right now. At the same time, older mountains are constantly being worn down by the forces of erosion, such as wind and water. Our planet is a living, breathing, dynamic geological system. Learning about how our different types of mountains form is very important. It helps us to better understand the complex planet we inhabit. This knowledge informs us about natural hazards like earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. It can also show us where to find valuable natural resources, often concentrated by geological processes. These activities deep within the Earth are fundamental to our world. They create the varied landscapes around us. They shape not just the physical land, but also influence climates, ecosystems, and the very course of life.